Hi everyone, Massimo here from the Blue Root team. And today I wanna to go over something that is heavily requested in a lot of our support channels and just in general on Zoho, and that's integrating your Gmail with your Zoho CRM account. So there's a few things to keep in mind when doing this. And in this video, I'm gonna go through each of them. First off, how to integrate your Gmail. Second of all, how to look at your privacy settings within your Gmail. And third of all, if you have a more secure Gmail account and you're using two-factor, there's some quirks with that. So I'm gonna go through each of those today. I just wanna remind you, if you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And also we have this new feature that we're we're wanting to chat about or this new event where you can come to our office hours. So you'll see over here, there's a video. You can go to our landing page, sign up for our office hours. It's completely free. In those office hours, you can kind of ask me anything, ask some Zoho questions, ask general questions about CRM, and we'd be happy to help you there. So again, sign up for our office hours. I'd love to meet everyone and uh, enjoy the video. All right, so let's get into it. So this is a sample like demo account we have, but yours should look fairly similar, at least the top bar here. So we're gonna go ahead and hit the setting icon here. And so when I hit this, where you're gonna wanna go in order to set up your integration is email. So that'll be under channels. So I'm gonna click that. Once you click email, this is a little different than it used to be. Uh, you can set up your signature and things of that nature here. I'd encourage you to do so. You can do that here by adding signature and then it has kind of an editor like you think. You can name it something, you can put photos, links, all of that. That's not the point of today's video. Today's video is to go here to email. So when you get to this point, it's gonna show this pop-up and pretty self-explanatory, you're gonna hit get started. Now, there's a bunch of email service providers they have listed here. The one we're focusing on today is Gmail. Note that most of these are the same process, right? So I'm showing you Gmail, but if you're on a different one, and we're gonna make a specific video for Office 365, you can check that out here. But in general, Gmail is what we're focusing on today. So we're gonna go ahead and hit that. Now, when you hit Gmail, there's three different options you have. So IMAP, as it says, is preferred. And the way I like to explain IMAP to people is IMAP is literally like a mirror of your inbox. So if you have an email in Gmail, you're going to have it in Zoho, but it's not actually stored in Zoho. It's just kind of looking into Gmail. So it's really great on data storage. It has a lot of benefits behind it. That's the one I'm going to show you today. Pop is, quote, an older school concept. It has its values and it has its purpose. But what Pop does is there's an email in Gmail. It literally copies it into Zoho. So there's a copy in Gmail, a copy in Zoho. What you could run into in this scenario is storage limits, right? So you could hit certain limits that could be bad. You'd have to pay more and all of that. So again, IMAP is the preferred model. It's kind of more new school. So we're going to go through IMAP. Oh, and to mention API, my eight years of doing this, I've never had someone use this method. It is a newer school method where you can write some code and do some things with the email service provider. I don't know a ton about that in this help document. It explains a little bit more, but today we're going to focus on IMAP. So I'm going to go ahead and hit IMAP. What it'll immediately do is pop up your Gmail login. So just like when you log into, I don't know, Facebook or whatever, it's going to pop up that login. If you don't see your Gmail here, if you're on a new computer or whatever, it won't show it. But in my case, I see my Gmail here, right? So I can hit Gmail. Now it'll ask you for your password. So you put in your password. And now sometimes what Gmail will actually ask is since Zoho is connecting with Gmail, it's gonna say, is Zoho allowed to read your stuff, right? So this is a standard practice. Everything's very secure, but they do ask for permission. So we're gonna hit allow. At this point, it now brings you to this screen. If your password was correct and everything went well there, you'll see this screen. So you're gonna put in your name. This is important because when you send emails from Zoho, this is what'll show up in the from. So it'll show the email, but it'll also say your full name or whatever you put here. So note with this integration, if you send it from Zoho, it's actually gonna go through your Gmail sent box. So there is a really good connection between the two. Name, you could just put your first name here, but that's what it'll show up in people's inbox as. Below here, the server details. If you're on Gmail, you never have to worry about these. I'm just showing you them so you see the full process here. And then you have three options here, which take a bit of explaining. So so private is the first option and the default option that Zoho gives you. It's used by a lot of, I mean, higher executives, I guess I could say, or companies where emails are very private between colleagues. So if you choose private, as it says, only you can see the emails. So in a contact or a deal or whatever, only you can see them and you have no way to share it with anyone. The second option is public pretty obvious. It warns you here. And what it's warning you of is everyone can see your emails in the CRM. So literally with this IMAP integration, let's say you emailed a client six years ago and that client is in the CRM, it will pull that email in here. 
So technically speaking, any email is visible now. Now you can exclude certain things. So a lot of people ask us, well, what about intercompany emails? We don't want that in here. And so what you can do is you can actually exclude domains. So you could be like, well, anything to bluerit.ca and then hit comma. Now it's going to exclude anything from that domain to that domain. And so that's a way to kind of exclude intercompany emails. Very common practice that we see people using. It gives just a bit of privacy. But public, honestly, is the, in my opinion, the preferred option. Oftentimes these CRMs, there's a ton of benefits behind making things public. If someone's off, if someone's gets let go in general, just for auditing your team and collaborating, there's a ton of benefits. So I'd recommend public, but I do understand there are some situations where private is needed. Keep in mind, this is on a per user basis. So you are setting this up for yourself. Your boss or colleague might set it up differently for themselves. So this is not at an organizational level. The last one is custom record level sharing. So what this one is, is it's basically your email is private unless you choose for that record to be shared. So for example, you have a person in the CRM called Matt Smith. By default, Matt Smith, all emails you've sent or received to him are private. You can go into Matt Smith and click a box to make it public to other users. And you can pick and choose. So you could say Jenna on my team can now see Matt Smith's emails. And so can Mike, but no one else. So this one's interesting, but it is on demand. So by default, it's private. And then you can choose to make certain records public for lack of a better word. So I've not used very often, truthfully. What I see is typically private or public with domain restrictions. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to hit private and I'm going to hit save. So what you'll now see is a red ribbon along the top of your page, as you're seeing here, that's normal. You'll also see this. If you've done it right, you'll see email sync in progress. This can take some time, depending on how big your inbox is. It's typically pretty fast, like definitely under a day, typically under an hour, oftentimes under 20 minutes. But just keep in mind, there is a bit of a delay. It's got to sync everything up. And how you'll know it's done is you can come back to this page and there will be no ribbon here. This yellow ribbon will disappear and that means you're done. So there's one other thing I wanted to show in this video, which is if you have TFA enabled, two-factor authentication. So this can be a pain in the butt, but it's really good security wise. But in the setup, sometimes people get tripped up. So you can see that Zoho has an option here, TFA enabled, and that brings you to a help article. And that help article I have here. So in the Gmail scenario, it walks you through exactly how to do it. So sign into your Google account, visit the password page, select app, enter the customized name. So you would do something like this, IMAP for Zoho, and you would generate the password. It'll give you this long, funky codified password with letters and numbers and spaces. That is your new password once you hit done here that you put here. Even if you know your password is testing one, two, three, if you have two-factor authentication enabled, the password you just made in these steps go here. So basically what this means is you've created a specific password just for Zoho and now Zoho and Gmail know that. Otherwise, Zoho and Gmail would be texting you all the time being like, hey, I'm trying to read your emails. Is that cool? And the two-factor authentication would get quite cumbersome. That's basically how you set up your email in integration. I'd encourage you to go through this. If you have any comments, please put them below. We love answering questions. Like, subscribe to our channel. And as mentioned in my intro, I'd encourage everyone to show up to my office hours. They're a great time. You can meet me. We can chat about your system. You can ask any question. You don't have to be a client of ours. It's open to all. And we have a link here. Appreciate the time. Have a good one.